Uh, our next presenter is Brian Campbell. Brian is a senior sales consultant for National Geographic Cengage Learning. Uh, Brian has been with National uh, Geographic and Cengage for 17 years. He spent three and a half years as, an, as a business marketing and IT department chair at Tulsa Union High School. He spent 12 years as a business marketing and IT teacher or a program specialist at the Oklahoma Department of Career Tech. And he started his career at Central Tech uh, back in the 80s. And I can attest to that because I was in one of his classes and that is <laughs> where I first met Mr. Brian Campbell. So, and he still stayed in the teaching field. So I guess I wasn't too bad. Uh, if you were on our call uh, early, you might have heard some conversation. Uh, he also spent 24 years officiating high school football. So uh, Brian's a great guy and we're so excited he was able to join us today. He is going to visit with us about the power of MindTap, which is a digital learning tool uh, that his company um, makes available to educators. So Brian, I am going to turn it over to you. Okay, I'm not going to share my screen right now. I'm just going to start talking, I guess. I seem to do that quite well. Uh, I appreciate uh, Dr. Hoffmeister taking a little bit of my time today, so I don't have to worry about trying to fill the full 50 minutes here. So, uh, uh, But um, I do want to thank the OEIP for, uh, I guess, hosting this and having this. And uh, what a great opportunity. Uh, I remember from my days, um, at the State Department of Ed, or at State Department of Career Tech. And a lot of our focus was on, especially in some of the things I worked on was, gosh, back in the day, we called it a duty task list. And I know that sounds probably archaic to some of you, but specifically what those duty task lists were was us working with the professionals from the industry to uncover and discover what students needed to learn and do in specific duties and tasks. And so even way back then, we had those partnerships with industry. And uh, to me, it is a perfect partnership because uh, what else are we preparing our students to do but to be successful in a career in some type of a workplace? And so uh, this is all part of what we're in for. Uh, doing just as you know as much as anyone else is a partner so thank you OEIP for doing that uh, we are going to talk about MindTap today and uh, kind of share some of that uh, uh, some of you may have used MindTap uh, it, it's a, a pretty uh, boy, rigorous uh, rigorous very robust program it has a lot of content that you as an educator will be able to take use and apply. The thing that I want to kind of bring out though that that makes MindTap so uh, legitimate right now is uh, what we experienced the last three or four months uh, with the uh, you know the distance learning that was taking place in all of our schools and uh, MindTap fits perfectly into any type of a, uh, a distance learning environment because it is web-based. And so because it's web-based, regardless if the students are in your classroom, if the students are uh, on a bus going somewhere, if the students are at home and uh, are bored with their normal playing or going to the lake like all of you and they just want to pull out a textbook, they have access to it. MindTap even has a mobile app. And so if the students have a cell phone, they can bring up the mobile app and some of the functions that are common in MindTap will work on that specific app. And so connectivity is one of the things that MindTap does so well and provides for uh, all of the students that uh, regardless, and I know today we're specifically talking about the healthcare industry, but uh, we have it up and down throughout our entire Cengage library. And so many of your students might be using this uh, if they're in the high school right now. Uh, they may be using this in our history programs, in our science programs, in our English language programs. All across the board, you're gonna find MindTap. The other thing that's uh, important to know about MindTap is that it's also one of the most common programs in post-secondary education. A lot of the colleges and universities across the United States use MindTap as their digital platform 
for their e-homework solutions, for assessments, for readings, for assignments. It's all built into this one particular program. So uh, I guess in a nutshell, MindTap, if you want the official thing, uh, boy, that's so official to just saying thing, but the definition is gonna be it's a digital learning environment for you and your students. Uh, it's very interactive. It allows students to do online, uh, assignments, assessments, uh, there are readings, there's uh, animation. Uh, it, it's all built into this, what we call a learning path. And, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, the thing that you need to know as an instructor, and you're gonna hear this more than once, is MindTap is powered by you, the instructor. The program is customizable. In other words, you know, if we take a book, and all you have is a book, you're pretty much stuck with that book. It doesn't change a lot in the three, four, five years that you have that book. MindTap allows you to customize the content that you're gonna use in your classroom. So with that said, um, I'm gonna do a couple of things here. One would be to uh, share my screen, which I don't really think is much in there right now. Let's see, there's my Zoom meeting. How oh, wonderful. And uh, what I wanna do is, like Joy Hoffmeister, I have a quick little video, it's only three minutes long, that kind of gives us and shows us the power of MindTap. Now, then I'm gonna take the rest of the time that we have to really dig into MindTap live. So that way you can kind of see some of the things they're referencing here, but also to see how this might work in your classroom. Keep in mind, this is web-based. And so when your students, if we get that, let's say November hits and they've decided that we're not gonna be back in school, well, guess what? Now you have a solution for those particular students. The, uh, you know, and, and I'm saying that, OSU has already announced that after Thanksgiving, they aren't coming back. After Thanksgiving, OSU is gonna be digital the rest of the fall. And that's probably not gonna be uncommon with a lot of other schools, depending upon what happens with the COVID-19 and maybe flu season and maybe a combination of both. So keep in mind as we go through this and what I'm gonna show you in a little bit, keep in mind how you might be able to use this in a digital setting which might be required of you come this fall. So first off, let's take a quick little, kind of a summary video of MindTap. Can y'all hear that? I cannot. Still no volume? No, no volume, Brian. Not okay. able to hear it. Abracadabra. There's usually a button that says you have to share the sound when you go into share screen. Yeah. Hold up. I hit share screen. Did that do anything? We, we can see the, the video, but we can't hear it still. You could see it, but you couldn't hear it? Yeah. Right. Well, you that have means... To go. Is your computer volume turned up? Yes, I was actually doing that earlier today, too. So, let's see. Unmute. Let's see here. Yeah. Stop yeah. sharing. We're getting recommendations um, to stop sharing and then reshare and then click the box. There must be a stop share sharing. audio box. Okay. So there's the share. I'm resharing. 
If this doesn't work, then we'll just go right into the live presentation. Is it on Cengage's website? Uh, this was a YouTube video, actually. Okay. Well, I think it is because I looked at it a couple days ago, Karen. Well, I'm we just going to have to show it, it to Brian. you. Yeah, I went ahead and left. Um, do you see my screen right now where is the NGL Sync login page? Yes. I see you checking. Okay. This is where we're going to start at then. I apologize that the video didn't come through sound wise. I had actually tried it a few times today, was checking on my volume, thought it was all good. So uh, anyway, uh, we'll still be able to cover the content that I was wanting to share with you anyway. Uh, so uh, this is our NGL Sync login. This is what gets you to the content. Think of this as the gateway, the path to uh, the actual software. When you purchase your products, uh, we download that into your own specific account and you'll have access to this through your login. Actually, you will receive emails from us when a product is purchased and it will give you the login instructions just like you see right here. And it will have all of the content that you uh, purchased from us, and even if it's before you purchased, one of the things we want to do is make sure you, the instructors, have access to these resources. So let's say um, Karen had called me in April and said, Brian, we're going to go with your medical terminology course. I'm going to need 25 of these, and uh, we want the mind cap. Uh, I'll go in and set that up to where uh, even though the school probably isn't going to pay for it until July 1, which when, when most schools get their money, we'll still flip a switch to where that digital content will still go to Karen. And so she'll have access to that beginning right there in April if she wants to take the summer to set her courses up to get any training we might have. And so we'll do the same for all of the uh, all of our MindCap curriculum that we have available and really any of our digital products as well. So just so you know, just because the school doesn't buy it doesn't mean you can't have access to it until then. We'll, we'll make sure you get that access as an educator. So what I wanna do here is obviously you have your login page and you'll have a username and a password. Uh, most of that, your username is, as mine looks like right there, is gonna be a, uh, like an email address and then you'll create your password. Mine officially is not password, but you know, some people tend to do that sometimes. So I'm going to log into this trial account that I've set up. And like I said, this is our uh, uh, kind of like the, the main books that we sell in our health programs, at least for that introductory course. We have our DHO, uh, one of our anatomy and physiology books, our medical terminology book looks like, and then also another one of our A&P books, Anatomy and Physiology. Uh, it doesn't matter which book you were to use, they all have the same type of a mind cap. And so uh, one of the things that you'll see when you get into this is uh, if you have more than one of these courses, they're going to look very similar because of the consistency from you know program to program mind tap to mind tap. It doesn't change very much at all. And so if you're familiar with the, let's say you're using uh, these three that you see right there, they're all going to have the same look to the mind tap. It's not going to change just because the book changed. Uh, and the procedures are going to be very similar. So the reason I'm saying that is if you teach DHO and today I'm probably going to be demoing medical terminology. Um, that doesn't mean that uh, yours is going to look a lot different. It probably won't. But uh, this is your landing page. When you log in, every time you log in, it's going to land on this type of the page. Now, one of the things I want to show you right off the bat, right here, is you'll notice you have instructor resources. Your instructor companion site is right here. The student companion site is also right here. 
And if you see this thing called Cognero, Cognero is always free. It's a part of our digital program. If you've ever used ExamView, it's very similar to ExamView. And so, uh, in fact, the propaganda that our company likes to tell us, the reps, is that they actually hired a few of the engineers at ExamView, and that's what they did was they built Cognero. So um, I'm giving you an inside scoop that no one else has heard of, I don't think. So there you go. Uh, so if you've never used it, get in there, create this little trial, and, and, and I can do that for you later. I think Kara is going to show my contact information, and I'll have that at the end. You can certainly email me, and I will be glad to set you up with the trial so you can get in there and start playing with it. I'm going to go ahead and click into the Instructor Companion site just so you can kind of look and see. It's very similar to what you've seen in other, uh, you know, companion sites. You have your instructor downloads and PowerPoints, more downloads, medical assisting terminology, solutions manual, time on task. And so there's just content here that is very common and traditional in most instructor resources that are online. The other thing that we're getting away from that I've seen in the publishing industry, like I said, I've been in this for 17 years. When we first started, we always had teacher's editions, and we don't have those anymore. They're going away. And I'm sure it's a cost deal, but what they've done is kind of like this, they've kind of started putting that TE in a digital platform online. And um, uh, it, it, at first the transition was kind of challenging, but it's become more and more accepted. And so you'll probably see in some cases, I know our DHO used to have a teacher's edition, so did our medical terminology, uh, but you'll probably stop seeing those as much and more and more content is gonna be put online. Also, being online, you can get more content than what you could do with a teacher's edition. And so that way, uh, you know, it, it just does make a little bit more sense. So that's the instructor companion site. The student is going to be very similar as well. So click on that. Uh, and again, they don't obviously have the teacher resources, but look, their student downloads, their videos and animations. Uh, there's PowerPoints in here as well for the students to see also. And that's one of the things I really like about, um, and, and I've said this before when I've done presentations, the thing that I, I like about PowerPoint or about multi, about the mind tap, you know, sometimes after all this COVID-19, your mind does get a little tapped, it seems like. So, uh, but the thing that I really like about the mind tap is the fact that, uh, and, and here's how I've described it is, it's kind of like your book coming alive. Um, Again, when you've got a book, or even if you've got a PDF of a book, it's pretty stagnant. It doesn't change an awful lot. But the thing that I like about the mind tap is it's, it, you know, we use as educators the term engaging so much, but it is very engaging. The thing that I like to say, though, about the mind tap is it's much more than just being engaging. It, it's, it makes an impact. Uh, it's, it's, it's very student friendly. It's teacher friendly. And it just provides uh, uh, just a different experience for the students when they have the opportunity to work through their content in this platform. Uh, so let's go ahead and launch the course. We have that wonderful circle of death. <laughs> and this is our opening page. Now I'm going to get you guys out of my picture here so I have everything to... Uh, uh, work with. Um, but this is the opening page. When you click into the book and you pops up on your screen, uh, here is your medical terminology for health professions, eighth edition. We're going to take a tour of this page really quick so you can kind of see what we have. Uh, we have obviously the title of the book right here in this blue bar. And then uh, you have a weekly view and then you have an outline view. What we're currently looking at, you can kind of see this as highlighted, is the outline view. Now, this big column over to the left is what we call our learning path. And think of it as a table of contents. The thing that's nice about this is, well, yeah, Brian, there's chapter one, chapter two, I see a word part review, chapter three, chapter four. And if you think about the sections that are within chapters, 
you notice right over here, we have these drop down arrows. We click on that and boom, there is the rest of the chapter. Well, we're not completely done. We even have more under primary medical terms and word parts. Boom, there are more activities. And you can just keep drilling down into the different activities depending upon what chapter you are in. Now, I went through that individually. Each one of those steps along the way just got us further and further into the chapter. So I can collapse it all back up again, and now I'm back to the way I was. So that's kind of what the outline view looks like, and we'll probably spend most of our time in that today. There's also a calendar view. This is gonna be more relevant to the students because they're gonna be able, when they see this, and theirs looks very similar, when they see this, they're gonna be able to see what is due that specific week as far as assignments that you made, whether it's reading, whether it's actually doing an activity, um, it might be taking an assessment or a quiz. Uh, it, it could vary depending upon all the things that you have available. So those are the two views that you have with uh, the instructor side. So we're coming back here. Uh, now, as I said earlier, you know, I took a chapter and I drilled into it individually each time I had one of those down arrows. You can do the whole book all at one time by doing that uh, expand all. And as we go through here, you can just see all the different chapters, all the activities built within the chapter. Uh, the different games are built in here as well. Uh, we might play one of those later on. And so this is just the main thing that you will work from is that learning path. Think of it as the, the outline of the book and then you just drill down deeper into the book itself. Um, over here is more of uh, if you had a, a specific activity that all the students had taken, you're gonna start seeing class averages and you can look at how the class is doing on specific areas, how the class is doing, maybe understanding some concept that maybe you might need to go back and review. And so there's a lot of information right here on this one page just for you to look at as an instructor. So now the other thing, that's what this, I guess, middle column is, and here's why I'm talking about that. You also see, see this toolbar over here. We're gonna get into these tools here in just a little bit, but uh, I just wanted to make sure you saw that and knew uh, that we had that over there. And uh, uh, you're gonna find those tools to be very, very useful. Now, I'm gonna go up here a little ways. I don't know where I really wanna start at. You know, you rehearse this over and over again, and then you think, well, where do I wanna start playing at today? Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and collapse all of this again. And, um, uh, let's do the skeleton system. We all have bones in our bodies. So I'm gonna drill down a little bit and look at some of these units. There's reality check. Connect yourself, check yourself. We'll drill down a little bit more. And you can see more pathology. Now, some of this, when you look at the icons here on the side, right there, when you see a paper kind of with a pencil laying over it, what, what that does is it actually identifies an assignment that the students might need to do, a practice. Some of these you'll notice, counts for a particular grade. Uh, the thing that's nice about MindTap is when the students complete a task or an assessment or a quiz or whatever type of a problem you have, it documents for you how much time they spent on that task, how well they did on that task, and the students get immediate feedback too. So they're not waiting for you to grade a paper, it actually does that for them. So. Uh, when you see this, think of that as an open book. And so there's probably gonna be some reading involved in that. In fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and click, click on chapter three, introduction. And I think it'll bring us up to a little bit of the introduction right there. And it talks about word parts. 
So obviously we're in some of this. Now, here's one of the nice things about MindTap is it will actually read to the student. Now, when I think of medical terminology of all of the books that I sell, this is probably the one that has the most complicated words. And so when you have the ability to have the word spoken to you, what an awesome advantage that gives those students to actually hear how it sounds rather than guessing how it sounds. So if you'll notice right here beside each word is a little speaker. Hopefully this one will work. Okay, did you hear that? Nope. Oh, Arthur. Still did not hear that. Well, that just, hmm. Your computer volume's not muted, is it? Shouldn't be, no. In fact, I had actually looked at that too. I wanted to make mm -hmm. sure that it was all up and running as well before I got on here today. Well, I'm very sorry about that. It does do a pronunciation of every word that you need it to do. And that kind of bothers me because I have some more things that we're going to need to show here in a little bit. Um, so anyway, uh, you have the ability to, uh, on those particular words where you had that, it would allow you to uh, go in there and um, uh, uh, speak the word for you. So uh, um, my apologies that that is not choosing to work right now. I'm trying to mess with some things here to see if I can't get that to uh, function a little better. Um, but anyway, they can go to a specific chapter and uh, they can actually have the chapter read to them. Uh, they have that ability with that little read speaker right there. And I'm going to close out of this. And let's try this. That was a chapter introduction. Okay, uh, the skeletal system. Now, I don't know a lot about the skeletal system, and, uh, but I do know about MindTap. And so basically this looks more like your table of contents that you would see in an actual textbook. So with that said, uh, let's go into one of these particular activities. The structure of bones. And you can do this in a number of ways. You can always do that. And you can advance the pages, page by page, just like this. And you can see how easy it is to move from one to the other. Now, uh, I'm gonna try this again. And I am just like very disappointed that this sound is not clicking on. Brian, I just, Googled it and there's a an advanced button in the settings when, when you do share screen there's an advanced <clears throat> and then there's a an option to click on share audio do you see that let's see here no I don't know if that's an old where's it at uh, in the uh, advanced settings yeah I'm gonna I'm texting you a picture here, maybe this is it. Let's try this. Cartilage. Cartilage, cartilage, is the smooth, rubbery, blue-white connective tissue that acts as a shock absorber between... Did you hear that? Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. So, thing that to me makes one makes my head stand out is its ability to read to the student. The thing that uh, I think is special in this is, you know, when we talk about quality in education, uh, having all of the students to have equal access to the content, regardless if at home or in classroom or wherever they might be, this gives them the ability to have content, and if 
they have challenges able to listen to them, have it read to them and hopefully make the understanding of it uh, easier to uh, grasp I say this, not as a like emotional gimmick or anything yeah. Gina Karen I know they know Nathan Nathan is and he's 30 now happily married in Perkins America but you know when he he was always on TV. Nathan did not read extremely well as far as speed goes. Read extremely well in regards to content, uh, not learning that particular content. But he could not read very fast. He processed. You know, the thing that I learned with Nathan is the fact that if we get to I don't know how many books we ended up buying things and getting from the library or checking the library. He was definitely one of the audio type learners. And if he would have access to a program like Brian, yes. I hate to interrupt you, but now you're breaking up. Well maybe stop sharing the audio while you talk and then when you need to do it, share it. Again. You know, we've had trouble with Connectivity here. That's not it. Okay, I'm trying to reshare again. I'm playing this again. Between bones, cartilage, which is more elastic than bone, also makes up the flexible parts of the skeleton, such as the outer ear and the tip of the nose. Articular cartilage, parenthesis, artic. Were you able to hear that? Yes. Okay. Uh, I apologize. Connectivity is being great. It had kind of this time of day where it seems to wait. One of the things that this will do is it does and it highlights words that you are using. Uh, as it reads across there. And so uh, it does allow the students to follow along with the content so they'll be able to not listen, but see the words that are being said. Now, I'm gonna go another page over and uh, I'm gonna show you some of the tools that were talked about uh, earlier, um, or we're gonna talk about anyway. Also, students have you have the ability to change the font size of the text. Right now it's on the size. You can increase it to where it's much larger and easier. You may have some that have visual challenges. This might be a tool to help them with that. So I'm going to go back to the way it was. You can also bookmark a page and you can print a page one at a time. Now, one of the things I want to show you is the ability to highlight. Think of this as you instructor and student have this capability. So you can highlight and then what you do, um, there's some options that up here. We're gonna go ahead and put this in print. Now, you know what? I want to show you something. That orange has an arrow. When you highlight in orange, and me being the OSU and that I am, I'm glad they put this in orange. This is what you do on the teacher side of this is also shared on the student's side. Of so if there's something that's important for the student, they really need to know and want them to know, you can actually make that and give that to them when you click the orange button because of that arrow, that's what that means is it's going to share highlight with the students. If I want to come down here and highlight this is the student side, they can highlight in any color they want. It's all right there. And the other thing that this does is if I'm the student and on that highlight right there, I can have it read that text. Can even add no 
code to that text. And Ms. Hubbard said this was on the test. So I've made a note to myself. I hit save and look right there. In this case, a little sticky note, if you want to call it that, in that says, what does it say? Click on it. Ms. Hubbard said this was on the test. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, I'm now, the other thing is if I've got this as a student and I want to say I need to read this page, I can go right up here to bookmark and I've got that click now. So, now page is bookmarked. And come back to that later on. The other thing that we hear was like I said, it can read text. You can even add a flashcard. I'll show you what the flashcards are here in a little bit. This is a tool that we tend to mind tap to demonstrate or to provide extra practice for the students to learn it. Just like the flashcards we use back grade school and maybe even in high school digital and adds a lot of extra learning opportunities for the students that are here. So I've gone one more page and look, this is built into it as well. In the past, as you go through that learning path, you're going to come to actual video content that you're going to be able to use and embed. <laughs> Earlier, I mentioned that one of the major functions of the musculoskeletal system is movement. In order for the bones to move, they need joints. The combining form for joints is arthro or articulo. Joints that move freely. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to go to another page over here. And I look at this and I think, man, this is good content. But you know what? I'm a good teacher, and a lot of times, as a teacher, you want to add your own content. What I think makes the ebook portion of this so important. When I was at Central Tech and at Tulsa and other where I taught, I always kept this folder called Neat Stuff. And I know that's a very scientific name, but for Neat Stuff, there was all things I would find. Whether they were from another teacher, from her, there might be something related to it that we were covering at a particular time. I know a teacher that doesn't add outside material to their classroom. One of the tools that we've done with MindTap is we allow you structure to add content to this ebook. Right up, you'll see this little pencil. By clicking on the pencil, see these little plus signs pop up and let's say man I remember a video that I saw on YouTube that I wanted to add to my class and I thought it would be useful for the students click on that that is an insertion point and look at all the types of outside materials you bring in if you have a Google Drive Google Doc that you want to use that or you can just bring that in right here. There's an RSS feed. Uh, there's a video search. Uh, one program that we'll talk about here in a little bit toolbar is a CMS homework application. There might be a link site in like even Microsoft OneDrive. All of these different tools and resources that you can use to add content to your ebook and what you add to yours is seen by the student. I want to do this, a video, a web video search. It immediately takes me out to a screen where I can search for, I'm putting in bone, that's where we're at, and see what pops up. So I have a video, bones, joints, crash, Hey, you know, I've seen this, or maybe this one here might even be more appropriate. Yeah, I think older. Oh, for artists, I thought it said arthritis. <laughs> My mistake. So anyway, let's go ahead and do this one, joints. 
I choose that. I click continue. Uh, wait, wait, there. Now, if I want to insert some text here, I can text to for video. Watch. Watch this video. And I can actually go down here and insert video uh, text for after they finish the video. Uh, now, go do with point just saying. I get done here, I hit continue. And now, simply put, my video is embedded in my So, well, I said 3.1, so I was off a little bit. But anyway, if you'll notice, watch this video. That's what we ended, indicated there. We wanted to do that. Now they click on the arrow and boom, they should be going. There we go. I am so glad that you guys are not five years old. If you were all in like kindergarten, the only way I could teach you about your skeletal system would be to sing your dutch And then what we students. put in here afterwards was now go do quiz 3.1. So I think that's one of the nicest features about uh, the MindTap is your ability to add content to this particular book. Uh, and so, uh, with that said, I know that I'm kind of here, I do want to show you some more features here really quick. Um, one of the things you definitely need to know about MindTap is you, like I said, have the control. You can actually you can hide content, you can edit content, like we just did, but you can also uh, this to when you want something available. For instance, I want this available starting right now. And I'm going to give them until tomorrow at 11:59. That's the uh, uh, where it automatically drops to. And then once I do that, I just hit save. Now that is set up where students won't see that until a specific time, so they can actually go in and actually see that. Show up here. Oh, I'm sorry, I hit the wrong thing. So, check yourself. Now, that's going to show up on the student side of the activity. So, the ability to go in and when certain because when you want something to be taken or looked at or available to the students. And so, if you had a that was built into that, you can hide that from the students in a specific time to do that specific activity. Now, one of the things that I had shared with you that I wanted to go through was this box over here, this bar of tools and resources, so you can see what's available. Off is my content. That's going to be that Google Drive, that documentation that you have there. OneDrive is on there as well. So you have the ability to drop content into the MindCap from any of those documents. The ability to highlight, and we showed that earlier. Uh, that's a wonderful feature. They even use Evernote here. We have an RSS feed. If you want to set something up like a social media deal class where they can talk between students, you have that able to do this as well. There is a gloss for every chapter in the book. They even have the ability to go in here. Well, this is one of the things that I don't think we really take advantage of enough, but the students have the ability to start creating their own portfolio. The thing that I want to emphasize about this portfolio is it gives them the ability to take this content with them after they leave the class. Obviously, the good for a year. Once it's done, it's done. And, okay, what do we got? In the past, we would take this is a the portfolio that they build on the subject of the course that they're in. They can take this with them. Um, the other thing is the full book. This is basically your PDF of the book. 
it's going to be exactly like the print version page by page and so if they needed to have that and they felt more comfortable with that they right there this is one of the tools that I love about the study hub study hub actually takes and compiles all of the content that they have made notes over all of the content that they highlighted or bookmarked and it drops it right here so we made those notes and highlights chapter three i click on that and on that and boom we actually have this highlight that we had done earlier what the teacher had done we had the note that Ms. Hubbard said was on the test. We what I highlighted as well. It does, and I think we even did book two, didn't we? Chapter three. One bookmark. Well, that just shows us the page. Oh, it takes us to that page too, I think. It does. And I thought it did, but it was slow there doing that. Anyway, what I like about this is if the students are diligent and and they are taking good highlighting content as they go through this, they are basically creating a study guide. Now, real quickly here, the read speaker, which we've kind of done, the thing that's nice about this is you have the option of how fast you want it to speak as it reads the book, medium, fast, even very fast. You can actually do this. We have United States, female United States, and why in we have Australian male and female? I do not know, but we do. So you can actually make it which you want, and then as they read the context or it's being read to them, that's what they'll hear. Uh, the C now is that solution that you have that's additional, I mean, non additional cost is added to what you've already got. Uh, and to be honest, it's a new app I have not IQ. So I'm anxious to get in there and flashcards. We all know what flashcards look like. And it's a very simple process. You can do it this way and then the definition, or you can definition first, shuffle the deck. What is the end of that? Oh, I wish I knew. Oh, fracture. So you have flashcards for each and every chapter. You notice right now we're in chapter three. So you have all of that as well. You can even create your own card. Uh, the last thing I'll talk about really quick here, and I'll try to make this as fast as possible. I obviously don't have students built into this, but it has a very in-depth grading system and towards all the things the students do. You can get sample reports. You can do that when you see these little dots. Those can be actual individuals. Uh, it could be a class. Um, it uh, it it's just like I said. It's very in depth. It kind of kind of shows how to do this. Um, you can change grades. You can do filters. You can change percentage actions. Uh, even analytics is on this as well. Uh, there's a student progress doc that actually shows the students. Um, I want to show you this. This actually takes the whole class in this particular example. It shows engagement, moderate engagement, engagement. Uh, it kind of shows uh, the time in course that the students spent there. You can kind of see those analytics down here. The average score of the class was 9%. The time in the course was 12 hours. They had 30 logins, then multiple students doing that, and then you have the uh, activities. Uh, guys, uh, I was up, and uh, I, I know that was really quick. I apologize that the audio was not working earlier. I'm glad we did finally get it a little bit better. Um, so I apologize for that, but I hope with all of this, that you can see uh, the power of mind tap and um, uh, just the uh, the ability that it has. Now, one thing I want to show you is if any of these courses we actually teach, if you would send me an email and what you want, I will 
I had to set up a trial account for you. So that way you get in and apply, kind of like what I was doing. And, uh, and maybe we could do a Zoom meeting together to uh, be uh, a little more uh, adapt to online tech. There's a number of schools in Oklahoma right now that are using this uh, for their medical programs. Uh, and if you all would be interested in that, uh, you know, definitely let me know. everything I showed you is based. And so if you're going to work on how you're going to handle COVID 19, flu season, or whatever might be us this fall, this is a solution for you. So, uh, Gina, with that, uh, like I said, here's my contact information. Uh, Brian.Campbell at Cengage.com. I think Carol's going to have that also. Uh, do we have any questions? Go ahead and stop my share. Does anyone have questions for Brian? Was there anything in the chat? I didn't get a chance to look at that. I don't see anything in the chat, Brian. Thank you, Kara. You're welcome. Uh, we so appreciate your time today, Brian. What an awesome, awesome uh, online platform. Um, one of my comments in the chat was, this makes me want to teach again. Um, <laughs> man, I would have loved to have had that uh, in the classroom, especially when with my open entry, open exit program uh, at Meridian. Mm -hmm. That would have been phenomenal. But it looks to me like that um, MindTap has thought of everything. Uh, you can tell that there must have been a lot of educators involved in that development and we so appreciate um, your time sharing this with us and Brian's amazing he's got great customer service he would love to help anyone uh, so please take advantage I, I know the big thing on everybody's mind is probably what does it cost um, and, and can we afford this so please reach out to Brian I, I'm sure he can guide you through those specifics um, as it relates to uh, getting this program in your classroom. I, yeah, I can tell you that right now. It's thirty dollars. It's thirty dollars per student for a full year, and so uh, that way you can take the mind cap. You know, it's a lot cheaper than a book, and they actually have the ebook. And so uh, there, there's a, a definite price break for you guys. Also, let me share this with you too. I mean, let's say you bought the mind cap for. Uh, let's say your DHO and you had a student um, finish by fall, you still have that seat for the full year. You could slide another, speaking of open entry, open exit, you could slide another student into that seat. And so that way they might be able to finish the rest of the year with that one seat because the seats are good for one year. Once they get started, they're good. If you don't use them up, they expire. But the thing that's nice about that, and it just depends upon your timing is, the students that start to finish, you know, they have access to that in full ebook. And if they stop or they finish with it, or let's say, heaven forbid, I know that a lot of times, especially teaching adults, you have students that leave. And man, oh my gosh, I just wasted a book. But let's say that student left in November. If you had another one on your waiting list, you could slide that student into there, into that seat, and you wouldn't lose that seat anymore. So, uh, it does have some flexibility with how you use, use that access. That's awesome. Um, and $30, man, that you're right. That is a lot uh, less expensive than a book these days and certainly more exciting to learn from. So yeah. um, just to reiterate what he said, I, I think maybe your audio is coming and going, Brian, but basically it's $30 a student for a year and you can slide someone else into that licensing seat if someone finishes or leaves. So you have that seat uh, as part of your licensing and it doesn't matter what student is sitting in that seat or utilizing that license. So, uh, mm -hmm. wow, that's amazing. That's really affordable and, um, and that's great. So um, thank you again.